Okay, so in this next video in the uh, probability series, we are going to uh, discuss the uh, concept of a probability space. So a probability space is going to be discussed. And this really is... Um, the generalization of this concept is the foundations of measure theory. Measure theory has two sort of origins. One is the um, probabilistic side of it, and the other is the... Um, the um, from analysis, it came, um, so the Lebesgue measure and things like that, the generalization of that and trying to generalize integration onto a more general space. Um, but um, in this one we're going to just discuss probability spaces, so we're going to try and make it as uh, as least abstract as we can possibly get away with, but we still want it to be a rigorous definition. Okay, so uh, you start off with a set. So you start off, you start off with a set off with a set with a set called the sample space called the oh dear sample space and it's usually denoted sigma like that is that the letter I don't know if that is the letter sigma is that the letter capital sigma I hope it is um I, I've forgotten completely I haven't you it's been so long since I've actually used that symbol um it used to be used for resistance when you were like doing Ohm's law. I think that is the capital letter sigma. Um, you start off with a, a set called the uh, sample space, and it's denoted by this horseshoe shape. Um, and this is the set. Is the set of um, all possible outcomes of an experiment. Possible outcomes of an experiment of an. Experiment. So, for instance, the experiment could be roll a dice, and then the sample space would be what all what possible outcomes do you get? You could get a one, you could get a two, you could get a three, you could get a four, you could get a five, or you could get a six. So the sample space would consist of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's an example of a sample space. So it's all the possible outcomes of an experiment all put into one. Uh, one set. And note, uh, for instance, let's take another experiment. Let's say I randomly put a point. Uh, I have my pen and I it's a point, a, in, you know, a tiny little point, and I'm going to put it down somewhere. Or, or let's make it, in, in fact, let's make it simpler. Let's have this interval 0 to 1, and I just have to pick a random number in that interval. Uh, that would be a sample space. The sample space would then uh, be the interval 0, 1. Uh, what would be all that set of all those points in this interval. Now, the important thing I want to stress here uh, is that, well, I'm, I should get on with the, I, I'll come back to the important thing I want to stress. Um, the thing, um, in fact, I'll hint on it now. A point in the sample space doesn't have to have a probability. Each outcome does not have to have a probability. What is the probability that when I pick a random number in the interval 0, 1, I get a half? It's 0. Because there's... Think about it. It has to be 0. What other number could it be? Because there's so many points in here. The chance of you actually getting a single point is so low. So probability cannot really handle uh, probability we do not ascribe a probability to an outcome in the finite case yes you can just ascribe a probability to the outcome but each of these outcomes each of these elements of the sample space does not necessarily have a probability instead what we can say in this case is we can say take an interval like that I can tell you what's the probability of me getting within that interval that has an answer but just getting a point is well, it can't be zero because you know it, there is a chance, but it it it's um if you, you know, well without um, doing some more advanced maths, I can't really say what what I want to say. Um, so we'll continue with the definition, and I hope to um, show how we rectify this problem. Okay, so that's the first thing you start with. You start with a sample space. Then you need to add. Then you need. A set of events, a set of events, which is denoted, which is denoted by curly F, which is denoted by, by, uh, how do you do, write this? I want to get this right. Um, no, that's not it. Um, no, that's not it either. Um, 
Uh, no, Ooh, this is going wrong. Um, how do you do this curly F? Um, it's sort of like that, though. Um, there's a nice way of doing it, and I've forgotten how you do it. Um, ah, that might be it. Um, like that, maybe. Like that. Or, or it might be like... Oh, no, that's not it. It's a curly F, though, um, that is usually used to denote sample space. Like that. Okay, um, so curly F like this. And curly F is a subset of the power set of sigma, of the sample space. So basically, you take your sample space like this, you construct the power set, which means you take every possible subset of this and put it all into a set. So if we had, for instance, our sample space was um, heads and tails for whether for the outcomes of, um, you know, of tossing a coin, presuming it doesn't land on its side, uh, then the power set, the power set uh, of sigma would be the set containing, well, firstly the empty set, the set with nothing in it, uh, the set with heads in it, the set with tails in it, and the set with both heads and tails in it. That is every possible subset, so that's the power set. So, this is a subset of this, so it's some of these in a set. And these are the things that can actually happen, the events that you can actually ascribe a probability to. So in this case, here, where we could not ascribe a probability to the uh, to getting a specific outcome, like a landing on a specific point, but instead we could ascribe a probability to this interval, to this subset of the... Um, of this um, sample space. So this would be an event. This subset of our sample space would be an event. So it would be in our uh, set of events. Um, whereas the set containing the singletons, the set containing just this point would not be in our set of events because we cannot ascribe to it a probability. Uh, whereas in this one, uh, because there's only a finite thing, all the sets containing the singletons would be in your events because, you know, you can ascribe a probability to them. And because of that, you could have any, in fact, you could have any of these subsets. So you could have an event being that you get a one or a two. So that would be a subset. And we could ascribe a probability to that, namely a third. So that's the final ingredient in this definition. Uh, I need another piece of paper. Um, it'll have to go on here. Right, what's that? Uh, ignore that, that is um, measure theory. Um, okay, so, um, right, um, so um, where were we? Oh yes, so the final ingredient, final ingredient in a probability space is that you need a function. You need a function, you need a function P called the probability, probability, which maps probability, this function maps this um, this um, curly F, and I've remembered how to do the curly F now, uh, probability function maps this curly F onto the interval 0 to 1. So to every event, it ascribes a probability. So for instance, um, let E be an element of F, which implies that E is a subset of the sample space, then P of E is the probability ascribed to E, so it's an element of 0, 1. Now it has to have a, some properties. Firstly, first property, 1. Firstly, the probability of the entire space, so of sigma, so sigma is always in this event. The, um, you know, um, sigma is always an element of your event, of your uh, set of events. Uh, you can always, it, and, the, and the probability of it always has to be equal to 1. So if you have the whole space in there, uh, it's going to be in, its probability is going to be 1. So the whole space is going to be in the set of events, and the probability function is going to map that, uh, that set onto 1. The other thing, you can actually derive this from the property that I'm going to say second, but I'll state it as an axiom because it's, well, it's not really an axiom, but you can derive it, and it's so key to probability that I want it to be there. Um, the probability of getting the, of the empty set, phi is also an element of here, so the empty set is also always an event, uh, the event that, you know, you don't get any of the outcomes, and that, the probability of that is zero. So that comes, that follows from this, the second axiom I'm going to state, which is that it's countably additive, which means that if, if 
A is an element of, um, sorry, no, if A, N are all elements of the event, so these are all subsets, A, N are subsets of the, of the um, sample space. So if this is the sample space, we have some sets here, which we could call A1, A2, all the way up to, let's say, A, N here. And you'll notice the way I've drawn it, they are all disjoint. So they are all pairwise disjoint, which means that if I intersect any two of these sets, that it's the empty set if I doesn't equal J. So A1 intersect A2 is empty because there's no intersection. They're all disjoint, pairwise disjoint, that's called. Um, then the union, the pairwise disjoint union, which is given this sort of square union bracket as opposed to the curly U bracket. The square U bracket implies that they are disjoint, the bits you're unioning, of n is equal to 1. And you can do it all the way up to countable infinity. Um, it could be finite, but you could union it up to countable infinity. And if you take the probability of this overall union of all of these, so this is a new set, a new set constructed from the union, this disjoint union of all these other sets that are all events. So A and are all events. Uh, first, the the um, set of events. Uh, firstly, you need to know that this union is in the set of events. Is an element of the set of events. Now that always happens. Uh, if you know measure theory, it's because this forms a sigma algebra of subsets. But um, but it does always happen, and it's not too difficult to see why that is the case. If these are all events, then if you union them all together, it should be a new event. Um, is equal to uh, the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of the probability of a n. So basically, just take the probability of this one. So the p function ascribes to each one of these a probability. So it gives them all values in this interval 0 to 1. And basically, if you want the, the number that this p function ascribes to the huge great set, you just need to add up all the single, all of the ones that come from each, uh, each individual event. And basically, if you're dealing with an infinite sum, obviously what we mean is you take the limit of the partial sums in the normal way that you've learned to do in real analysis. Um, okay, so that is that property is called countable additivity. Countable additivity. additivity. And it is this property, actually, which defines uh, a probability space. Uh, with just this and this, it forms what's known as a measure space on an arbitrary set. Uh, but the fact that the ho uh, that the um, this what we could call a measure, this probability, is one uh, for the whole space uh, defines a probability space really, um, and that are, those are the ingredients of a probability space. Then, so you need it's written. You have a sample space. You have your set of events here, and you have this probability, and that collection, all three of these together, makes what is known as a probability space. And it is the study of these probability spaces that we'll, um, we will focus on for the rest of this playlist. And it's a really, really fascinating branch of mathematics.